What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Boompa World. With the new Mario Golf coming out, whenever that's coming, it made me think back to when my sister had those Game Boy Mario Golf games with like RPG elements and felt like a little sports adventure in your pocket. I feel like that idea was the main draw for me purchasing Golf Story. It came out in 2017 and was made by Sidebar Games, who was trying to beef up that Wii U library, but they didn't finish in time, so they had to settle for the Switch. They also have a sequel coming called Sports Story, but it got delayed. So let's see how their first foray went and how this game builds off a classic formula to see A, if this brings back the Mario Golf vibe, and B, if we should be excited for their upcoming game. And right as we get into it, if you guys want to leave a like to support the channel and subscribe to see more videos like this, it would help my baby channel get essential nutrients to grow. The game leads in with this tutorial, emotional intro involving your dad teaching you how to golf in this like flashback style. Your pa teaches the basics. You make a putt in front of some geese. You laugh, you cry, you poop a little. It snaps back to current time. Seems we are freshly leaving our wife with a pretty good phone conversation. Leave me alone, honey. I'm chasing my golf dreams to relive the memories I had with my dad. The game was made in Australia and has heaps of that Australian charm and humor. You get there, the beautiful course you grew up on, the well-worn grove. It looks like straight trash 20 years later. The new owner is greedy and he's a douche. I feel like that's so relatable. You ever go back to like a park or a pool or something you adore as a kid just to see it all run down and shitty grown up? Everything in this world is pretty funny like that, but it doesn't feel forced. It just feels kind of like sarcastic, goofy golf world. A lot of personality, good quips, small details that make the experience a lot better than how it looks off the bat. The actual golf gameplay is simple, but it gives you a lot of options and choice. You can go in precision mode to really see where your shot's going to go. Select clubs and also adjust the spin of your ball. You have to work with the wind though. Don't forget that. You always got to work with the wind. To get enough money for our lesson, we help this guy hit his ball out of the bunker, and we also beat this guy in a three-hole 1v1 sniper quick scope on Nuketown. These missions were fun, but they don't replace like an actual competition, like a tournament to me. But we finally get enough money, and right as we do, we pay up for our lesson, and coach shits on our golf dreams, our swing, our strategies, but we're not giving up. After he does that, we destroy all of his prodigies, all of the students he has. Most of them just, after that, they just quit golf altogether, really, except our one awesome emo pink-haired girl rival. Uh, but after completing these missions or progressing the story, you level up and you can upgrade your guys' golf skills. Like distance, spin, stuff like that. It's neat. Uh, after after a while, uh, we get an opportunity to join a tournament. The owner of the place tells me to spy, get some unfair competitive advantage. So I have to venture forward to a new area and make myself useful. I leave our golf course and it has this cute little overworld with happy little music that I just enjoy. This game is giving me a lot of Mario Golf Game Boy vibes, but I'm also getting an obvious Earthbound vibe with the humor and surrounding world. It's definitely an inspiration. Lurkmaster Valley is the next course we land on. It's a caveman-based world with these low IQ article sentences. The first section of it was actually a mini golf course with only part threes, and it was really fun. that We had little competitions on that. And there was even a challenge where the holes got fat and it reduced to a part two, like they got really big, so they were easier to make. It reminded me of a glorified iPhone app or something I'd sink like a ton of time into. And I'm also glad this game isn't stupidly easy either. It actually felt like I had to practice and kind of improve. But you basically do the same thing here with a few different goose and giggles along the way. You do varied missions with cute map design and music and it makes the boring sport of golf seem a lot more lit. You feed fish, you hit their food like a golf ball, you save the turtles like a good white girl, and you dig in bunkers for fossils and treasure. Each time you finish a mission, you also get experience and money, which you can spend at each location's different pro shop for better clubs or something. A lot more than I expected with the gameplay and the dialogue and the humor around the world works with it to provide a fun experience. I wish there was more golf competitions and battles, though, rather than just like mini games or like bite-sized missions, but the gameplay was sound, and you could always play a meaningless practice round if you felt like just just golfing. This game had me taking my time and enjoying the atmosphere. Uh, it makes me understand why my uncles love to golf so much. So we have to get our course ready for the tournament after we clean up Lurkmaster Valley and get a competitive advantage of course. This involves us going to a third local golf lodge, the Cheeky Beak Peaks, to take notes on their grass and how they got it to be so darn crisp and green. We're helping out our groundskeeper. Our groundskeeper is disguised as our caddy. But before we can even take notes, we have to take care of their bird problem and help everyone else out in this this area. It's kind of getting repetitive here. The missions were still different enough to keep me going, and it wasn't boring. I was kind of trying to break the mold of that. I was kind of ready. But a character that we saw earlier in the game watching an online training video, we get to see her as she owns this course. 
So that was cool, and she actually becomes Lara's coach afterwards. After we figure out Cheeky Beak Peaks, it's like, come on, where's the tournament? And I thought it was time, but yet again, we make our way to the fourth area, the Bermuda Isles, another pretty golf course to get max yards uh the a pro golfer they tried to negotiate with earlier on in the game but he didn't really want to associate with their poor quality brand we wanted him to join a driving competition to promote our park so the tournament can be more properly advertised and hyped up come on i need some clout um so i think the story here was carrying a lot of weight at this point I and mean, the little bite-sized missions were kind of not but here there was like a string of missions on this island that kind of reminded me of Link's awakening where you have to get this item to fix this guy's issue then he gives you a thing that just so happens to fix another creature's issue who's across town and you repeat that a time or two so you basically run through all these courses after getting to check out what each area is all about so you run the front nine after you meet all the characters and hazards surrounding the environment weirdly the way the world is set up reminds me a lot like the whole progression reminds me a lot of paper mario the origami king you make it to a new location you do puzzles to progress and the only difference this has is golf instead of battles. This game stand out in its own right, though, uh, kind of with its own vibe, even when compared to the Mario Golf games. This game was so much more to do, so much more story. It felt like a modern take on it for sure, uh, with a lot of creative liberties. But spoiler alert, we end up winning the driving competition. Then before the tournament, our coach insists on inviting everyone for a roast. There's like this sequence where he tries to make a roast in the microwave and then tries to use a Luna foil. It's just pretty funny. I don't know, it's just something I didn't expect to see in a golf RPG. But we end up winning the tournament the next day. I mean, I kind of snapped on the course, but the competition was pretty trash. Then when I won, everyone took their piece of the pie like vultures. It was pretty funny how my winning slowly dissipated before I could even step off the podium. My guy was more focused on becoming a pro. He didn't care about the money. But the wife being a hater in the crowd with her cringe new boyfriend named Tobias is a funny ongoing joke too. After winning the tournament, we arrive at a meeting of the minds in this invite-only golf club called Tidy Park. And we have to bootlick and make some connections with these old annoying back in my day ass old people a good parody of like old head gatekeeping play on the course you even have to buy shitty vintage clubs that aren't nearly as good as your regular ones kind of annoying to use them but it's kind of funny bit little hipsters this random guy at the golf party gives you a key that takes you to a castlevania looking area with like chicken on the ground and like little pumpkins even a ghost lawnmower Ugh. some of the missions in this area involve shooting eyes into skeleton head and defeating a grand wizard but not the racist kind the magic kind things of uh, that nature I just wanted to be a golf pro, bro. I was level 26. I didn't need to do all this. I don't know what I was doing over there, but it sounds more crazy than it actually was because right after that, I had to beat our favorite pro golfer, Max Yards, in a 1v1 on the Bermuda Isles for his caddy. And right after that, I had another 1v1 with the owner of Well Worn Grove to get out of my terrible contract. And I thought those were really triumphant moments of the game where my guy's skill has improved and I saw his progression. After fighting our way out of our contract, there was a mystery whodunit type style thing at, at this golf club the game had a lot of puzzle elements but especially here too which was enjoyable it was kind of a lot though in this area overall the game had good music lots of memorable set pieces nods to classics good writing that isn't forced but doesn't take itself one bit serious uh like look this rap battle here between the young and old generation was was wild and it was followed by a tense match between each so much weird anecdotal stuff like that happens uh while you just advance the story I don't really want to spoil everything because I think this is an indie game that's actually worth playing. Before the true final tournament, we had to go to a snow-themed area to get a rule book about golf. Problems are solved by us. Coach's son and a sad, deep story weaves in through there that I'm not going to touch on. Play this game. I highly recommend it. I feel like with all these fun stories and stuff, there just wasn't quite enough big tournaments or things that remind me of the sport of golf like in in like something like happy gilmore or other related media but now it's time to get to the pros and win this tidy park open and max yards the douchebag we all know and love tried to take our shine and make it so we didn't become a pro but we beat him easily and by easily i'm i clutched it on the final hole to get a birdie to put me ahead yeah we'll do that little tiger thing we did it we're pro now we did it with the fist thing so now that we won i thought the game would wrap up there uh but there was actually a few more scrubs to beat and we could become more official more distinguished we unlock this blue moon dunes course uh looks like they got the boise state grass and we finally get our round in with the old guy we beat coach's son 1v1 like come on who is still questioning our competitive greatness we had to actually get eight match play score cards to get into this final blue moon tournament and i know that th throughout this game it was so much cute silly lighthearted, fun stuff but there was no real overly exciting or energizing like ending moment that was like significant everything kind of 
had a slice of life go with the flow feel to it even up to the end the championship tournament our guy did the same i gotta get some rest then he went off the next day the tournament was the final boss i mean all the pro players a difficult course that wants you to take risks and i actually tied for first place but they gave me the trophy and i felt so like not triumphant for the ending but the game ends it shows the overworld full of people all happy slowly zooms out it looks like australia a nice little nod it looks like everyone is happy for us that we finally conquered our midlife crisis and became a pretty good golfer the credits roll cutely and i checked if there was quests after the main game and all it says is now i just gotta enjoy life which is facts overall golf story is a borderline must play for the switch it was 7.99 on sale so it's like a 3d movie ticket gives you like 20 hours of fun uh, but it could have been 15 and i would not have been mad at the end it felt like it was stretching a little bit but hey the funny dry riding mixed with the great music made by one dude great gameplay too they just really knocked it out of the park this has me excited for their next rpg although it did get delayed they are probably just trying to work through the world event that stifled a lot of game companies oh yeah it's also better than the mario golf Game Boy games by a lot everything about it besides simplicity i guess but i'm gonna end it off here thanks for watching Thanks for being here. Thanks for making it to the end. If you want to like the video and subscribe, that would be great. Otherwise, I'm out. Thanks for watching, and golf story is cool. Night.